common wombat of southeastern Australia in the wild. To see if common wombats live in your area, look for their tracks, their burrows, their distinctive cubic scats or droppings, which may be separate pellets or joined together. These pellets are amongst the driest of any mammal or marsupials and contain the finest grass particles. A wombat's digestion is very slow, up to a week. They like to park their bottoms against elevated surfaces to poo, and their teeth are unique for a marsupial. They keep growing all life. And did you know that a wombat will do between 80 and 100 pellets a night? This is achieved by having an enormous storage capacity in their large intestine or colon. All this got me thinking, how do their scats end up so cubic? It seems no one definitively has said how. This is a model of a digestive tract of a common wombat. The simple stomach and small intestines, the proximal colon with its transverse ridges, sac-like areas and pouches at the enlarged area near the end of the proximal colon. The distal colon, which is laxer and smoother, showing some pellets inside. The rectum and anus, which is round, not square. I use the model to make a range of jelly wombat scats. And here are the real things. The softer cylindrical jelly scats that break, I think, from being moulded by the transverse ridges of the proximal colon. These pellets are more cubic. They relate to eating dry food that takes longer to digest. They were flattened to get this shape. Could the time spent in the proximal colon where plant fibre is digested and the flow of material is slowed and tumbled, especially in the enlarged area, contribute to the flattening effect? Not sure. The digestive tract of specimens, or maybe even fresh roadkill victims, would need to be examined. But pellets must be so dry and firm that the anus cannot shape them on exit. And yet the downwards pressure exerted from the backside when defecating must have some flattening effect.